Yeah. And this is a question that I've experienced in some of these high high growth areas is what if you're marking whoever it is here in Utah, it's blue stakes, who doesn't clear for six days um, before you can go even do the conduit? What do you like? What is the solution there? I'm not saying that they're wrong, but there's some very oh. the broadband providers can't um, oh. really account for it. No, there's real life limitations. I just think the FCC rule is stupid. The fact is that's one of the rules on the maps. And then during this whole process of allocating the bead money, they paid zero attention to it. They simply did not take that into consideration. And so, you know, so the fact is it, there's only four or five major rules with the map and that's one of them. And nobody paid the slightest bit of mind to that. And, and all the people reporting their maps don't pay any attention to that. Right. I mean, the, yeah. It's, it's difficult to imagine what rule would work perfectly because, I mean, I would say that Comcast and Centrelink serve every home, you know, within a mile of me, let's say. Uh, and I and I think that's an accurate representation. At the same time, uh, I would suspect that most of those addresses would have to wait longer than 10 business days to get a new, right. new service if they wanted to, just because of the way backlogs work and the way they run their businesses. And I don't know, Travis, if you can connect people within 10 business days, but I would guess most small fiber ISPs especially as they're expanding, are, are probably not able to do it that quickly. Well, you, sh you shoot for two weeks, but a lot depends on did the, you know, up here what they call it go for one. I don't know what you guys call it there, Kim, you know, um, if that gets cleared. Mm -hmm. And a lot depends on the homeowner's availability, too. Um, right. So um, it all depends, Mr. Mitchell. Um, but some, sometimes... It could be two weeks, sometimes it might be a month.